Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome back to some more Heritage Minutes. Just once again checking out these incredible one minute Canadian movies and so we're starting out with Lucille Teasdale. Angel. My love forever and ever and ever. This is me and my mother, Lucille Teasdale. One of Canada's first female surgeons. She came here with my Italian father to a medical mission in Africa. Despite 20 years of civil war, together they built a modern 500-bed hospital. What? Do you have a mother? Mama Neto Queenie? Whoa. Mm. Disinfect yourself. No, no time. This man's bleeding to death. I'll take antibiotics later. She performed the last of her 13,000 operations not long before she died of AIDS in 1996. Oh, what? That is honestly just not an acceptable way to start out the day. I could not believe what I've just seen, or I cannot believe. I don't even know what to say anymore. Obviously, we were just taken on a hell of a roller coaster. Like usual, they don't hold anything back in these ones, especially when you just get, well, I don't really want to go back to there right now. And instead, I just want to focus on the first parts where she just built a hospital. Oh, wait, her father as well, I think, was part of this entire thing, the narrator's father. came here with my Italian father to a medical mission in Africa. Yeah, so obviously, we don't ever hear anything about him, but no, that's an incredible story. And the fact that they built a 500 bed modern hospital and especially in the midst of a, a civil war I believe they called it 20 years of civil war 20 years of civil war honestly it's so disheartening because an entire generation or maybe even two have just kind of lost their entire lives in that time so to be seeing the carnage that is unfolding in front of everyone's eyes and what they're having to treat like I said I don't really want to go because I wasn't exactly ready for it right at the end here where they just start poking and prodding around but I really have no idea what she got caught by does it say one of the first female surgeons in Canada Lucy Seal Teasdale devotes her life to healthcare in Uganda 1962. But without going back to the exact frame, I would just love to know what did she actually just get stabbed by or poked by? Because it almost looks like a splinter or something. I guess it went through her glove and he's like, no, disaffect yourself. And she's like, no, this man is bleeding out. I just have to focus on the patient. And I wonder if that actually led to her demise in the end. I mean, I guess I do have to take into consideration that it is a heritage minute. And we know, or I've been told many a times that they are very highly researched and just produced and everything like that. And so I can only use assume that's what they're alluding to with the entire thing it's like disinfect yourself no I'm not going to bother and then that was her what was that wait hang on 13,000 surgeries did I hear that right the last of her 13,000 operations oh, not 13,000 my goodness how old was she 70 something not long before she died of yes. AIDS in 1996. Oh no, in 1996, yeah, being 70, no, just 67. And so in saying that, there really isn't anything else she could have committed, you know. She committed her entire life, her entire being, all of her mental willpower and all those things, and even just towards the end, her, literally her entire life, just to what she was trying to accomplish. And by the fact that she set up a 500 bird hospital, her and her partner and the narrator's father, I guess, clearly shows that she was just so devoted to what she signed up for. She just went full steam ahead, 13,000 surgeries. I don't even know how you get that many done in a lifetime but man this is incredible incredible person but anyway now moving on to our second one we have gray owl the world's most famous canadian gray owl just back from a triumphant british tour is to be a reluctant guest at a gathering of first nations <laughs> archie you may not realize this but right now you are the most famous red indian in the world these are your people you have to be there Come on, Harold. Let's go. Sure, Harold. Sure. His name is Archie Bellini. And if he's a Red Indian, I'm the king of China. It is an honor to meet the man called Grey Owl, who has brought much respect for our people. Imposter, rascal, dreamer. <laughs> and yet the Englishman who called himself Grey Owl <laughs> awoke the whole world to our vanishing wilderness. <laughs> brother says men become what they dream you have dreamed well oh. wait hang on a second 
And I need to get it off my chest and just look again. Is that, who was in that, um, Pierce Brosnan? Surely it has to be. Where was he? Yeah, surely that face has to be Pierce Brosnan. And that is just where I was confused at the start here. When he's driving past in the car and you just, obviously you see him, you go, hang on a second. Surely they shouldn't have or couldn't have gotten Pierce Brosnan to be playing a Native American person when he clearly should know that he's not. Archibald Stansfield Blaney. Oh, that's a hell of a name. Elias Grail, writer, conservationist. Okay, born in England. Oh, what? That's, wait, hang on. This is just getting even more deep. But Grail was a well-known conservationist and writer in the 1930s. Although born in England, he betrayed himself as the son of a Scottish man and an Apache woman. His articles and books stressed wilderness conservation and became bestsellers in Canada and Britain shortly after Grail died in 1938. Wait, what? Well then, like I said, that just got even more deep and now I have absolutely no idea what is going on. So was this a character? What? Hang on, I need to do more research. Was a British-born conservationist, fur trapper, and writer who disguised himself as a Native American man. Wow. Oh, hang on, so there was also a movie about it. Grey old movie? Wait, oh, oh, wait, hang on a second. So that's why. That's pretty impressive that they got Pierce Brosnan to actually play the character that he obviously played in this, which is based on a book, which is based on a person. So now the entire picture is starting to take shape. And so I was just confused about how he knew or didn't know that he was Native American or if he was lying to himself or everyone else or what. But now knowing that, I guess he was someone that was using the platform that the Native American kind of image was giving him just to spread his message more. You know, he could go, oh yes, I'm this and I'm this. And just having that point of difference just really helps to hammer your message home. But he managed to convince, I guess, internationally, just a whole bundle of people. But then when he actually just turned up to the tribe, they go, you're no Native American. But actually, I disagree with what your teachings have been. And that's what I seem to get it from at the least. And so you are now just one of us in the best sense we can. I mean, I guess he actually summed it up better. So I'll just replay it again because his wording was fantastic. My brother said, Says, men become what they dream. Yeah. You have dreamed well. You have dreamed well is just an incredible way to put it because I believe that it could be applied to so many things. It doesn't have to be anything even remotely close to this, you know. Just as long as you were going after your dreams and that is what you believe in and that is what you follow and that's what your passion is, you have just will kind of hopefully dream it into fruition. And I guess that just goes along with what I was saying before about how we just completely leveraged, I guess, the entire culture, hopefully for good. I'd hope that there wasn't any kind of negative things surrounding this. And if it is correct that they accepted him into the tribe, I can only imagine that it was all right overall, hopefully, fingers crossed. But no, like I was saying, just an incredibly dense heritage minute. I'm not even going to begin to tap into the entire thing within this one minute section because it's already had a movie and a book and it was based on a person's life and so overall there was just so much to go back on there and so I'm just going to have to look into it a little bit more but it's an incredible starting point and very very intriguing. But anyway now moving on to our third one we have Home from the Wars. Please if you'll just listen to me the government is Mr. doing Minister. absolutely everything that it can. Mr. Minister! Every one of these men and some of these women have put their lives at stake for this country. And some of them have come home to, well, <laughs> well, they've had no homes to come home to. Is that any way to treat citizens that have gone through what we have gone through? Minister, what about low cost mortgages? Mortgages? These, these people don't even have a down payment. We could reduce the down payment to a token level. Call them over. I've just had an idea, but I need you to help me get their attention. Within days, an order in council boosted veteran housing to 10,000 units and launched the country's post war boom. The sheer moral force of the returning vets had prevailed. Wow, well this one definitely caught me off guard and it was more in response that I'd never expected Heritage Minutes to go that heavy on the makeup. I mean, I guess they've also done, like we saw in the first one, blood and gore and whatnot, but I just, that one caught me off guard in that regard. I mean, this message is absolutely correct in so many ways. You know, these people are giving up their lives, some literally giving up their lives and others just giving up an immense amount of their time. Some returning home clearly with injuries and others returning home, well, back to no home, I guess. And so for what I gathered from this Heritage Minute, I can only assume they didn't even have enough housing for them, let alone just dealing with all the health, the physical health issues or the mental health issues like none of that that was all just going to be by the wayside it was you didn't even have enough roofs over people's heads to begin with so in the beginning here i can certainly understand why people are just going to be quite angry like oh just listen to me no just actually do something and then even at the end here he just takes credit for something he didn't even dream up he goes oh yes i've just had an idea let alone he just get whispered in the ear i mean of course the information has to be disseminated some way but you don't have to say oh i've got an idea you could say okay we've got a solution instead of i have an idea and i mean i must admit i am a little 
little bit confused how a low cost mortgage helps them out in that regard because surely that would have taken quite a while to get up and running. I mean I can only imagine that it would have been a lot more complicated than all of a sudden just everyone being housed. It takes time but let alone just the political energy and financial energy and all of that kind of organization would have been a nightmare just to get it out the door really fast. So I can only assume that this entire thing just turned into a really positive thing overall. I guess the narrator did say that the entire economy was jump started just from one little tweak or maybe it was a massive tweak. I'm not too sure. I mean, I guess that just all depends on your perspective because if you've been away at war and then you come home to no home and then all of a sudden through just some governmental tweaks, you have a home Wait, really that should just be a thing already. So I can certainly understand why everyone in the video was clapping. I mean, I guess they don't really know the outcome yet, do they? They were more clapping for him. But either way, they were just trying to bring it something good into fruition because clearly they it all just been through the wars literally and man that's not a good place to be but anyway now moving on to our fourth one we have joseph tyrell wow joe tyrell was working the geological survey minerals or fossils he never dreamed what he was about to find Blackfoot called them the grandfather of the buffalo. Oh. It would prove to be one of the richest dinosaur deposits in the world. Wow. Damn, well he found them in 1884, Geological Survey of Canada, Alberta, 1884, just doing some mega, mega kilometers just across, I guess, all of North America probably. I can only hope that he didn't have to walk everywhere. I mean, I guess they did show him a little bit by boat, but man, there is a lot to dry landscape and so hopefully he just maintained that horse from the start here. But oh, I love the ending where they say it was the Don, no, the Buffalo's grandfather? Yeah, the grandfather of the Buffalo. That's an incredible way to describe it. I mean, I guess it's kind of true. I don't really know where the entire lineage to split off but maybe it's true maybe it's not at first i thought he was going to be finding some kind of gold or some kind of copper i had no idea because they were talking about geological surveys and didn't they say mining minerals or yeah okay so he said minerals and ore and that certainly makes sense you just want to be scouting i guess the entire mega country that you've got just for all the resources that you can get in that regard so when they eventually got down to here i just assumed oh he's going to find some mega diamond gold whatever you want to call it just kind of poking out of the ground but no he almost found something well he actually did he found something more rare than any of that especially considering that these places are still in use today i mean australia also has one and there's a couple of others i think maybe chile or argentina you know they're just these massive kind of desert are just incredible incredible dried up riverbeds and ocean beds and all these things that are just left behind these incredible reserves of fossils but then for I think he said Joe Tyrell instead of Joseph but anyway either or just for him to be walking through doing all of his surveys going oh yeah we got some rocks we got some rocks okay that might be cool to kind of mine oh hang on what's over there wait a buffalo's grandfather I've never heard of that but I'm gonna go check it out and then lo and behold you're just finding things that are way more rare than anything else you went out to actually look for in the first place and so it's incredible how things like that line up you know you go out for one thing but you probably end up discovering just through the nature of discovery itself something even more important and more life-changing than just general minerals i mean i'm sure that he was still marking down all the different ores and veins and everything that he found but to find dinosaur bones and one of the biggest if not the biggest reserves of dinosaur bones and fossils in the world is just an incredible feat in the first place i mean of course this is just a western discovery like they said the actually what did he say blackfoot i think that was weird the Blackfoot called them. Yeah, he does say Blackfoot. I'm so I'm wondering when this originally came out because now I'm a little bit confused. It sounds like it almost came out in 1984. But either way, I can only assume that they were referring to the Native Americans. And so, yes, of course, they would have known that they were around. They would have discovered them in caves and just generally out and about. You would see the grandfather of the buffalo just lying out and about, especially if there's just a lot of erosion all of a sudden from a big flood or rains or things like that. You would just have fossils just peeking out all over the place just over a grand period of time. And so, honestly, just what an incredible journey 
that would have been just setting out just across the wilderness across the badlands i think they called it in 1884 just basically by yourself in the grand scheme of things you've got your horse you've got your bow you've got anything else maybe your own two legs just in between that but either way just incredibly remote areas you're taking your surveys and then all of a sudden you just stumble upon this and really i wonder if you even knew what it was at first so if you're going hang on that looks weird i'm curious to kind of investigate more but actually hang on a second i know what that is now that i've just dug half of it out it's a femur that's i don't know two meters long and i can only assume that once you find one you're just going to have the eye for it. you're just going to be picking them out all over the place and go holy moly we just have to investigate this more because this place is just a gold mine of not gold but just more precious things than gold but anyway in saying that i reckon i'm going to call it there so thank you for watching this video if you did enjoy it feel free to do the youtube algorithmic things down below also if this is the first video monthly watching then make sure to go back and check out just any of the heritage minutes or anything else that i've done also make sure to check out all the original videos down in the description below or hey maybe even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future but all in all have a good one and see ya